In the last two instalments, you've joined me and DJ Snowman, a pirate radio DJ and long-time member of the Buzz FM family. Buzz FM being Manchester's biggest and longest-running pirate radio station. In those two episodes, we've looked at station manager Eric B's house, which was home to two studios in purpose-built sheds, as well as an array of temporary studio locations and transmitter sites. Perhaps one of the most prevalent sites for pirate radio in Manchester was the Seven Sisters, of which only three stand today. This was a community, a vertical city within a city that sat on the border of Old Trafford and Stretford and became a mecca for pirate radio. Built in the 1960s as a paradise compared to the cleared slums they replaced, the Seven Sisters were made up of seven blocks, with one group of four known as Osprey, Raven, Falcon and Eagle Court, and a set of three close by known as Grafton, Pickford and Clifford Court. Snowman grew up in Raven Court and remembers the blocks all being home to a pirate radio station or two over the years. This was the way it's Osprey Court, so I would have said Osprey Court stood here on this, what's been cleared here. It says to me that this is where the block was here. So yeah, this would have been Osprey Court here. Wow, it's, it's kind of hard to get your bearings yeah. up for everything. I think my block was about here, and then my grandma's block was Falcon Court. That stood just where those trees are there. Yeah, so, ah, right, okay, now it's making sense now. Through here, Louis, here is the road. Here's the road here. This, is the, this was the main road in, and I suspect the gate did it or boarded it over there somewhere. Yeah, this was the That's main it, yeah. road that came in, so where we stood right now would probably have been my block would have been here. So Raven Court would have stood here. Osprey Court would have stood there. Falcon Court would have stood through the undergrowth there. Yeah. And Eagle would have stood on here around about there where that tree line is. Right. I would say in front of the tree line because they look like they've been there a long time. Yeah they do, yeah. It's mad isn't it how it can just be gone. Yeah. All them years and like families and lives and that in there and it's Mate, just gone, there's nothing left. Honestly, standing on here now really, really does take me back. It does. Now, so in these four blocks here, I would definitely say it's like Sting FM definitely came from here. Um, Love Energy, I'm pretty sure, came from here as well. From these blocks? Yeah, from these blocks here specifically. Uh, there's been there's been a few. I think um, Fresh FM may have come from these blocks, aka Super Fresh. I think they came super fresh and fresh came from these blocks here and the blocks you see behind Clifford on the left is where 106 FM had their studio that was in that block there right. whether they transmitted from that site or it was one of the other blocks I don't know but the studio was in Clifford Court and Pickford's now is the one with Legacy's antenna on Pickford no not Pickford the one behind you can just oh, see right, the antenna yeah. just oh, yeah, you can, coming yeah, through yeah. there which is Grafton Court We've got Bratton, Pickford and Clifford, they're the three that are left. Oh yeah, and there's, there's Legacy's aerial there. That's the one, Grafton Court. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. You, never, you never know. You never know, there's nothing there's left. There's no other than the bits of kerbs. Yeah, and, and... Bits of concrete, what, the that cladding? That is the cladding. Yeah. <laughs> that is the cladding. That is a piece of piece radio of original history there. Tarblock a, cladding. Tarblock cladding, that. The hole for the uh, fucking roll bolt for the aerial. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tower block cladding, that yeah. is there. That is original tower block cladding. <laughs> well, maybe there is a few little clues then. Then maybe so. Like many tower blocks, they became a breeding ground for crime and drug use, but they took on another role as a place for like-minded people with a love of music to spread new music to the city. The Tamworth Estate, or the Bird Blocks as they became known, were used by a multitude of well-known Manchester stations such as Love Energy, Fresh FM, which became Super Fresh, and Sting FM. 
Another station those from Manchester may well remember was Unity. It came on as a pirate from here for a short time before going off. It then returned as 106 FM from Clifford Court before moving to Adelphi Street in Salford. They later returned as a legal station under the name Unity years later. The blocks fell into a state of decline and four of the seven were eventually demolished. What happened was, back in the day when they made them in the 60s, nobody had washing machines. So they have a laundrette at the bottom of each of the blocks. Yeah. Every block have a laundrette. Over the years, people got washing machines and the drains couldn't cope with the amount of drainage coming out of the flats right. anymore and the drains went down the middle of the block. So essentially they would have had to split the blocks apart, yeah. rebuild all the drain system, put all the blocks back together. Right. It wasn't cost effective so they bulldozed right. them for that reason. Only these four blocks all because these were designed differently. These originally had balconies on but you can see they've um, Built them in, they've aren't built they? them in now, yeah. yeah, boxed them in and glassed over them now. Um, and obviously, but they, they look very different to when yeah. I was younger or yeah, yeah. the photographs you see online. So, the four that stood here Raven Court, Osprey Court, Falcon Court, and Eagle Court were all demolished about 10 years ago. Right. Uh, the three remaining blocks were given multi million pound refurbishments, but the land that once housed the bird blocks still sits empty. Walking around the grounds of the old buildings is quite eerie when you think of all the lives that played out here, happy times as well as sad times. It triggers visions of young guys with record bags arriving to play their sets on the pirate radio stations that were based here, and today you'd never know any of these things took place. Another stop on our journey is the old studios to Carnival FM, at a location known as Offices at 111 Princess Road in Moss Side. Carnival was run by the charity Radio Regen, which ran radio in areas that were being regenerated and it had a legal RSL to promote Manchester Carnival. They'd also come on the air for Black History Month. Since 1999, Radio Regen set up three full-time community radio stations, trained hundreds in accredited courses and enabled more than 10,000 residents of disadvantaged areas in Manchester, Salford and the rest of the North West to get on air. Their experiment in how community radio tackles disadvantage and AIDS regeneration has included three full-time stations and more than 30 temporary restricted service license broadcasts, one of which was Carnival. The first floor was home to two studios, the broadcast studio at the front and a secondary recording studio at the back. Carnival employed Buzz DJs and Eric would shut down Buzz FM when Carnival was on the air under their RSL. DJs from Manchester Pirates, Irie FM and Ital FM also came over during RSL periods. The aerials remain on the roof to this day, but Carnival FM doesn't exist anymore. Carnival formed Peace FM, which later became Legacy FM, a legal station that still serves Manchester today. Our next stop brings us to Powerhouse in Moss Side. Powerhouse is a registered charity and was formed in 2000. It's a multi-service youth hub for central Manchester, which is home to a range of services for young people which include mental health, careers advice and guidance, specialist programmes for young people, as well as a library for young people. Services also include sports sessions, arts and crafts, a youth club and music and drama sessions. There is a music studio at the premises, but in the early days there was a radio studio which was home to Moss Side FM, another community RSL. Moss Side FM was also supported by Buzz FM and its DJs over the years during Buzz FM's shutdown periods. Our last stop takes us to the Zion Centre, home to Hume FM, another legal RSL that served Hume. Today it sits on Stretford Road, but in the 1990s it was Zion Crescent that formed part of the Bullring Estate, hence the name, the Zion Centre. This road never used to be here, this road didn't exist, what used to happen is you come to the here now you have to turn right and you turn left and you went onto the estate there, this right. road this road was actually covered by flats, it's so di like where we are now, we're driving on the old estate this is where front line used to come from alright, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. Um, first studio I ever visited and it would have been somewhere around here but, but in it, a different building, oh yeah, yeah completely, this is the Zion Centre right. this is Hume FM <laughs> Hume um, FM. Uh, this is where Hume FM used to come from, which was a legal station again. 
just come from this building right. here. Now Zion Crescent, as you can see on that thing there, this isn't Zion Crescent, it's Stratford Road. Right. But that is a sign of the past. Right. This used to be completely cut off. This was in the middle of the estate. This is the middle of Hume Estate right, right. now. Right. This road was never here and we were on, if we were back in the day, on Zion Crescent. Hume FM came from here, yeah, did a few shows off here. Uh, Hume FM. The studio was on one of the upper floors here in one of the rooms. Yeah. It was a temporary studio. And then downstairs in the basement of this building, they had a full studio, full radio sound studio later on. Did Hume FM transmit from here as well? Hume like, FM transmit from here from the roof of there because it's right. quite a high roof. Oh, it is, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and again, because it, it was just a local ILR, you just needed to go around the way, so yeah. there's no need for height really. So that's the majority of the locations used by Buzz FM over the years. In its final days, it was the only operating pirate station covering the whole of Greater Manchester. Those involved in the station remember it with fond memories and great times, but with the highs came the lows, and over the years, Buzz FM, like most pirate stations on the dial, was raided many times by the DTI. These raids saw Buzz FM lose all of its broadcasting equipment and studio setups on many occasions. Perhaps one of the most heartbreaking losses was the numerous audio and video tapes, flyers, photographs and memorabilia in the archives which was all disposed of by the DTI. After repeated raids, Buzz FM sadly decided in 2003 to operate at weekends only, from Thursday to Sundays. The station took a break of nearly two years after a massive fine, but as no other stations came on the dial to continue the legacy of Buzz FM, the station returned in late 2005 after hundreds of requests by the Manchester public. Then in 2007, the most damaging blow came. In a full public gallery attended by Buzz FM DJs and listeners of the station, Eric B was fined a record £10,000 at Manchester City Magistrates Court for running what the judge called a commercial enterprise. As I said in the first part of this series, the station never made any profit and what little funds were raised through very rare adverts was used to replace damaged or broken equipment in the studio. These adverts, as few and far between as they were, caused a headache at the court case because the DTI used them in their favour to argue that the station was a commercial enterprise, which it definitely was not. Along with the fine, Eric B had his premises raided, had to forfeit his car, PCs, video cameras and much more, including, once again, all of the station's broadcast and studio equipment. By 2008, along with the launch of the new Buzz FM website, the station was once again broadcasting on the FM dial in Manchester and to the rest of the UK online. A final raid in around 2009 saw Buzz FM disappear forever. The station never made any profit, although it could have, and because of this, it wasn't viable to come back again. Snow went on to run Tower Block Radio, an online radio station with much success and a large following. Now he's a family man with a passion for music and fond memories of Pirate Radio, who did an amazing job remembering everything for this series. As for Eric, well, he left his Pirate Radio days behind and lives a quiet life. He still resides in Manchester and has a deep passion for the music. He still appears from time to time on Legacy FM, a legal station in Manchester, and we're in talks at the moment for doing an interview, so stay locked up this end of the dial.